everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Always Open. I'm your host, Barbara Dunkelman, and today I'm joined by two of my brand new friends. Yeah! Some of my, well, not my best friends, but best friends today. All right, well. Uh-huh. <laughs> we got We're Will Mahoney. There. Welcome we got to the 40 show. 40 minutes of this. Hello, hello. <laughs> and everybody. Caroline Consnauer. Welcome to the show, guys. Yay! Round of applause. Woo! Thank you. I didn't expect applause. You get applause on this show. That's one of the uh, the many benefits. Really? Every oh, time? Every well, time. Now I don't feel as special. Uh, why don't you guys clap when we record our shows on the same <laughs> soundstage? <laughs> That's, huh. That seems like a them problem. Interesting. <laughs> Duly noted. Do you guys clap when you introduce things? Because yeah. sometimes like, you just have to get it going and then everyone else goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See? I like the cheers. Thank you, Come Christian. Out of the Thank you, Christian. We like have that. a talk I have a word show. with you later. Sorry, I was just talking to one of the okay, not mics. <laughs> we have a talk show, and when we have guests on, we clap. And but we, I think we add applause too. I think we, we do. definitely fake do. applause and fake laughter because no one laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> For the audio listener, we just dapped up. Is we that what that's up. called? A dap. Yeah. yeah. I don't, oh, here's wow. the thing. So I wanted to have you guys on the show for multiple reasons. I first of all love your content so much you guys are a brand new channel here at rooster teeth called best friends today if you haven't checked them out you are missing out so much you have no idea you guys are hilarious you're so creative all the stuff you do is fantastic thank you but something that i'm fascinated by (laughs) is i started at rooster teeth when i was 22. damn so that's me now you guys are around that age group and it's so it's fascinating for me to see like a new generation come in to the company and be making content and like seeing everything you guys are doing it's like does very this nostalgic for me with oh, this nice. yeah. does the spark fade sorry I'll, i'm sure I'll it does <laughs> you could look into my eyes and take probably <laughs> no it's it's still there i can see it <laughs> you find new ways to make the spark i like that yeah that's effectively kind of, that's like re- like really you, f- you find the spark again yeah Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's. I mean, you guys probably experience this with content creation. How it's yeah. it's hard to keep oh, yeah. the, the same thing going for a really long time without kind of losing steam on it. Mm. Sure. But I still always yearn for the spark. I do as well, and I think it. I, I think it's a it's a bad thing. It's like how your uh, desire is yeah. what's going to make you suffer. So I've I've tried to let it go, but I just I can't. I just need to be famous, <laughs> and I just need people to love me all the is time. Is that what it is? No, it's not what that that'll, is. That'll fade eventually. Uh, you faded, I think, within like the first two months, and I was like, I don't want people to look at me anymore. <laughs> Are you like me, where you just don't want to be perceived it's, at all it, anymore? It's gotten to that point, and uh, and I think at the exact moment where I didn't want to be perceived anymore, that's when I had a lot of people contact me and be like do you want to uh do you want this opportunity to be on our podcast we really think that you have a great future that do was you, me by the way do you have that a script for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> for this. i'm kidding but but and then and i was just like i think i think i'm just going to explode because i know this to be the thing that i want to do mm-hmm. but something deep inside of me was like nope yeah, nope, yeah that's wrong that's not that's not it but i don't know what it is well i'm curious um for those who don't know you guys too well i do want to talk a little bit about how you got into content creation how you got into what you guys are doing now because i think it's such a great story how you all kind of came together to form this group but all kind of from different means yeah. and different ways so yeah because mm-hmm. we were not friends no I did, no i did not know who. he he thought that i was pretty disgusting when he first met me what? disgusting <laughs> is said, a strong he word he said that i had weird lips <laughs> that i had chapped ass lips That's i what said that said. you had chapped lips <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, th- I think you just seemed like um <laughs> all right yeah go ahead <laughs> no, no, tell, no, we'll, tell. We'll move on. how did you get into content creation <laughs> <laughs> the story are we doing the stories yeah, of how we yeah, got yeah. into content creation? i would love to know if you're comfortable talking about it. <clears throat> I think that for us, our generation, so this is, this is uh, I was born in 2003, uh, we had access to cameras pretty early on. And so I think mm-hmm. for the most part, we were always, I want to, I'm not speaking for you, but I feel like there was always a, a part of myself where I felt lonely and I wanted to entertain somebody, but I just didn't have anybody there. And so I would, you know, uh, b- be a character. And then that that ultimately turned into, you know, videos. But I, I actually wanted to be an artist I was an illustrator for a long time oh, and wow. I would only make videos part of the time. Mm-hmm. And then those became very popular. And I was like, well, I guess people don't want my art. Shit, I, well, I guess I'm just so funny and likable. I should just show more <laughs> of that. <laughs> Darn. Uh, but yeah, I think it was, I think loneliness and creativity is ultimately what made me mm-hmm. a star. And then you started creating for YouTube and yeah. social media and stuff like that. Yeah. For your YouTube channel. Yeah. All that fun stuff. All that, All that good, fun stuff. Good that fun, fun stuff. stuff. Um, for me, I I'm very I feel very similarly loneliness, um, 
but I'll, I'd parent boredom with that too. I was so bored. Sure. I was like, um, so I would just, I had like these action figures so and I would just like, just make stories. That's 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 what I that what that's what I came from. Just you were about stories. eighteen years old when you had these. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is me when I was ten. Okay. I also really loved Smosh. I loved Smosh. Oh my god, me too. And um, so I started my first YouTube channel was called Splish. <laughs> so, um, uh, and did they sue you or what yeah, they sent me a cease and desist okay. and it crushed my dreams. But my haters are my motivators, so I, I continue to push take forward. Take that, Ian Hecox. <laughs> take that. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, it was just I was like, oh, like imagine like how cool would that be to for that to be my job and then i kind of was like oh that's what i meant to do I, I told myself from a young age i was like oh that's what i meant to do i'm just supposed to make content i think that's where the pitfall is yeah. is the idea that at, at 10 years old you're like well this is what i'm meant this, to do for the rest mm -hmm. of my life but I think, this is my life i think no. it's because there is this sense of i'm validated and i feel loved by this thing or these people this the response i get from this and we equate that with this is my purpose in life i don't think it's that i think our we are driven to find love and acceptance in a community but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're driven to be goofy ass smosh content yeah. creators for the <laughs> but also, goddamn I don't lives. Even know, or splish, a splish. <laughs> i don't know about the validation because i feel like i created for like the first five years like just into the void like i don't think i, I had a single Which fan is usually you know? the case yeah. for most creators but right when you would talk on the camera you'd be like the things you guys make me do you would like you would speak to an, you would speak to an audience <laughs> that wasn't there and so it in a, in a way it's like fantasizing it about yeah. having a community it, it's still a way for it's you to fantasy. feel as though you're you're connected to something even though you aren't and that's delusional as fuck that's so and here we are that you said that. and, yeah. you, and it, it worked out it does work <laughs> it out yeah out. doesn't work out for everyone i i am curious you know growing up with the amount of social media that you guys did do you find that you're often struggling with social media and like getting those likes getting those views getting like chasing that kind of not a, i don't want to say attention that's not the right word but validation through those means um i think it's less about the validation now at this point and mm. it's more about just uh stability and mm. because it's such a volatile like industry that it's just like it's scary that it's like okay if i don't post for like two weeks it's like okay well it's the internet like everyone's just gonna find a new creator like i don't actually matter in the that in the to me is like the scariest part that i've heard people talk about only recently like i know twitch streamers in particular like well if i don't stream for a week or two i'm gonna like lose viewerships i'm gonna lose subscribers and people yeah. are gonna move on i'm like how do people have like such a short tension yeah. spans with that kind of thing whereas like in my mind i think oh i'm happy if this creator i like posts whenever i don't need them to post every mm. day yeah so and of course there are those people that you know fans that will like you or no like just like you love you yeah yeah um but i think that it, there's just so many creators and it's so saturated and it's just ever there's just so much attention there's everything's constantly grabbing for your attention that it's like yeah. you know sometimes you won't even notice if a creator stops posting because like you're distracted by other content now, right you know exactly I think I, I have a different perspective. Yes. Oh, I do have a different perspective. Yes. I'll say that uh, it wasn't necessarily chasing likes and validation. Because right now, my, my opinion is that I, I do not like social media. I find it to be very unnatural. And anybody that says, no, it, you know, it's bad. It's not good. And people don't use it responsibly. It's still something that can be used properly. No, I don't. I do not think that we are built to use this thing appropriately. And so I think it's, for now, easy to say it's bad. But before... I use social media as a way to sort of maintain the image of my ego, mm. right? And I was too young to really know who I was. And so it wasn't so much I need to be validated as a person. I need, I want to be this thing that they see me as. Mm. And if I keep contributing to that image, then maybe I can be that person, even though that's not who I am. Obviously, this causes a huge identity and existential crisis. But I will say that there is, to me, a sense of you can develop a, a cult following mm -hmm. or you can develop those really unfortunate but also very fortunate, financially speaking, parasocial relationships. And I, I think that I have maybe three or four creators that I've, I've watched since I was 11 years old and I don't watch anybody else and I just stick with them. Um, and so there is something about trying to maintain that, uh, that affinity that that's really important so it's less about mm. staying on trends and staying relevant yeah. and more just how do i keep giving them the same thing how, how do i uh, i'm not going to make that analogy <laughs> but how do i keep them coming back yeah. for the same thing that they came for? who are those three creators if you don't mind me asking 
I uh, <laughs> want to say you're comfortable sharing. Your sure, thoughts. I think. Well, I really like. Uh, you know, Red Letter Media. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. love Red Letter Media. Love Oni Plays and okay. uh, YMS, which is your movie sucks. These are just like those are all great. These are just a bunch of white guys wow. just chilling out. That's <laughs> very long-standing channels. Oh yeah, I've yeah, never heard long. of any of these. Really, well, even no? Red Letter Media. No. Wow, they're great. They're I mean, they're all great. Well, you were, you were talking about Red Letter Media yesterday, right? Didn't that come up somehow? Yeah, it did. It did come up. Um, yeah, Love I, Mike. Don't, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's hard for people to get into, but it, those are like those feel like friends, right? They feel like community, and so I watch them because I, I like those people. But everything else on YouTube, I'm like, who gives a fuck what you have to say? I don't care. Even if you're a great artist, fuck you. I don't care. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll just have that as a short on our channel. <laughs> right. Tag all the other. Damn. Creators. There's only one YouTube channel I still watch. Yeah. Other than like the stuff that we create here. Yeah. Um, there are travel vloggers named Kara and Nate. Mm-hmm. I just, I watch them religiously. But how did you start? It was during the pandemic where yeah. I was like, man, I miss traveling. I miss going places. Oh, here are these people who have this like whole history of all these countries they've visited, all these things that they've gotten to try. And so I just started following them. And then I started doing van life during the oh. pandemic. And they're still doing like a bunch of challenges. Like right now van they're biking life. across America. Damn which is crazy, but they're wildly entertaining and so personable. And again, they've created this really amazing community in a very like inclusive space with what they do. Cult. Oh, yes. How often do they upload? Once a week. Once a week. Are you there like waiting for it? Mm -hmm. Really? Well, it's always, not always, 99% of the time it's Saturday morning. And so it's like a routine of like, we wake up in the morning, we have breakfast and coffee and we watch Kara and Nate. Oh, that's nice. Or as Trevor accidentally says, Kate and Nate sometimes because he forgets. (laughs) Uh, but it's adorable. a great channel. Yeah. Oh, Trevor. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, need a, <laughs> I, need a, I need a YouTuber that I actually like. You need to go out into nature and you need to get the <laughs> fuck off your phone. You don't need any more entertainment. Well, that, that's the other thing is that I think that people need to take a break from media and just be in a deep, deprogrammed environment. Because when you just keep watching programmed reality, what are you doing? Touch grass, some <sighs> you might say, in a yeah, meaner t- way. Touch, yeah. yeah, touch grass. Well, yeah. I think consuming some... I mean, media that isn't okay, isn't, hear me out, <laughs> yeah, no, <I'm> listening. <laughs> that isn't YouTube, is, um, would help me creatively, would help me re- be a better writer and help me be able to, because I feel like- Like you get inspired? I feel, yeah, I get inspired and, I mean, maybe that could also be solved by reading, but I feel like I'm just not going to read. Um, <laughs> so like, <laughs> but just like even um, just words, sometimes I think about like, just like, stories and words and i'm not that good at them so like maybe watching more things and listening to more people talk or even listening to podcasts or something i'd agree with you yeah it's about balance i think i think a a lot of people are like you have to be either fully one way or fully the other but i don't think so i think Mm. there's a balance between the two and right now anything is better than like my brain rot on on tiktok right now reels sure you ever just realize how you just spend like four hours at the end of the day just yeah. On social media. I do that all the time. And I've posted about this before how I think it's like a legitimate addiction for me. Yes. And trying to be in nature. But it's just, it sucks when it's 100 degrees out every day here. Uh, that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I was outside this entire summer. How did you do it? I think I'm insane. <laughs> you have a very high heat tolerance. <laughs> yeah, I, li- I like the heat. That's I, crazy. I really like the heat. Well, where I- are you from originally? Did you grow up in the heat or the cold? No, I grew up in New Jersey, New oh, York, wow. which is like, it's not terribly cold, but it's still the North. We had bad winters. Yeah. Um, As a Canadian, I relate. Damn. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, what? I didn't we got know another that. like, what, 20 minutes of this? Oh, f- <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 that was crazy. <laughs> no, I love Canada. Oh my God, I love Canada and I, I love my- That makes per- one of us. Particularly speaking, my Canadian, my the part of my family that's Canadian, they're just so enlightened. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Uh, as enlightened <laughs> as they can be, as any Western can, Westerner can be. Yeah. But- um. Reading, reading is good. Reading is good if you are looking for that information. If you're just reading to read, it's like it's not going to be entertaining. You're not going to get what you what you're looking for. I think eventually, maybe, maybe if I read enough, I'll be like, maybe reading is good. <laughs> <laughs> They've been trying to teach us this in school all along. Yeah, it's finally yeah. Come to fruition. Yeah, it's just they teach it in a vacuum. They're like, read they this do. book. Why? Because it's good for you. Why? Which can't you tell because of all the symbols? I well, what do I compare this to? This is I get it. It's a good book. Fuck you. Sorry. Uh, I'm very angry about this. Oh these no, things. please. Uh, we like it. Very angry about. We these like things. passion on this show. Oh yeah. I haven't oh. read a book since 
I haven't read a book. We since. can all, all we'll read a book together. It's like sophomore year of high school. Wow. What kind of books do you think you would like? Like, do you like Ooh. fantasy? Do you like adventure, mystery? As a kid, I loved Percy Jackson. Okay. So maybe the Iliad. No. Uh, the Odyssey. Okay. I liked the Odyssey. You did. I liked it because I felt smart when I was reading it. All right. <laughs> That's so valid. I was like, yeah, like I understand this. I think I was just surprised that I actually understood what was going on because um, I think it was just the way that the my English teacher like talked about the Odyssey. It's like, it's very difficult for for so You felt good about it. So I felt good about it. But I don't, I don't remember shit. Right. I don't know. I just know that it was about uh, some dude Odysseus or something. Uh, sure. Every single book that we were forced to read in school, I hated. Um, and I don't know if they're still teaching the same curriculum they are now, but we had to do uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Yes, sure. of course. Uh, 1984. Love 1984. Didn't read that. No, that was like, how many pages is that? Like a thousand something pages? Damn. 1984 is, is a, I think it's a smaller book. Yeah. No, it's, huh? it's a big honker. Is it really? Is this, a, is this thick or thin? And it was just, That's it was thick. wordy okay. as fuck. Huh. Um, and then we also had. I like dystopian novels. That's why. Animal that Farm. That sounds cool. Animal Farm, yes. Love that was Animal a good Farm. Book. Brave New World? Love. Did you read that? Mm -hmm. I fucking love Brave New World. It's one of my favorite books. I think that was the last book that I read. I think you should read Symposium next. What's it's an that extrapolation book? of Greek mythology to interpret, you know, the waking. Is world. that the one you said we were going to have like a book club? I, oh, I wanted to read club. I wanted to read Republic with you um, so that you could understand why I'm why I look at the world the way that. What about audiobooks? Yeah. Because you, you listen to stuff, I assume, music, podcasts. And, yes. And, like. Not podcast. I listen to music, and I only really listen to music at the gym. Okay. But if I listen to an audiobook at the gym, it'll make time fly. Let me tell you. Yeah, you can't really focus on it when you're at the gym. You have to sit down, and you have to be. Calm. But what do I do with myself? I feel like I'd fall asleep. Listen, or like listen to the words. And if you're reading, so I, I personally like a very particular kind of book, particular form of literature that's extremely technical, where you have to listen to every single line and consider it thoroughly, so that you can't do other things. It's not a story. It's not a narrative. It's somebody's just their goddamn opinion from a very long time ago, but it's yeah. relevant. So I, I think that those books really do help you learn to uh, rationalize a lot better and it does help you articulate points a lot better. Yeah, that yeah. would probably help. Yeah, that would <laughs> um, Yeah, This might be a stupid point, but I feel like with audiobooks, it adds another um, barrier of what makes a, a book good just because like what if i don't like the person's voice it's that's it's, reading it's it. a very valid point it, because it's like it could be a really really good book but some the person reading it could be like the fault in our star well then and i'm it. like uh, your own voice. i but what if that's what stops me from like i'm like this is a terrible book i'm not reading this. i will say one of my favorite book series <laughs> i don't like the narrator for the audiobook so i just read him really instead. yeah at what point did you give up? Did you try to give it a chance? Oh, really? You yeah. were like, no, nope, oh, not yeah. happening. Yeah. Imagine if they got the person to do Fifty Shades of Grey and his voice was like, Anastasia <laughs> <laughs> walked into the building no. where Mr. Steele well, was. Wasn't there a thing of Gilbert Godfrey doing an excerpt from that book? What? Oh, yeah. I love that. He That's touched so a pussy. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Wow. It would just be like. That was really good. <laughs> well, was it? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that was really loud. They don't say pussy yeah. in that book. It's not porn, guys. Oh, that's true. It's romance. What do they What do they call it in that book? I read those books, by the way. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I'm not ashamed to say it. Which books? The Fifty Shades of Grey series. Oh. I read the first one as a joke because I was like, everyone's reading this. I yeah, need to know what it's me about. too. As a joke. But then you're like, I need to know what happened. Okay. Because it leaves on a cliffhanger. All and so right. I'm not going to just not finish it. They make porn so complicated for women. God damn, why does it have to be a fucking trilogy? You ever read Emily Bronte? Fuck it. Is, wait, what is Withering Heights? Withering Heights is a very old book, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is... I, I would say like smut for women, but it's basically about a woman that refuses to marry a man and then that man tortures her children for eternity. Huh? I've never read it, Horny. but... Sorry? Listen. Lovely. I love Nothing my smut. I love my smut books. Hell yeah. They're very fun to read. I right. can't ever... I can't say that I've ever done... I've never... Maybe that's how you should get into reading. Try reading male, smut first. Smut? Do you Not want some male. like... If you want an, a very low uh, barrier to entry, uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses series. It's fantasy. Okay. It starts off pretty tame. The last book I would say is probably the most raunchy of Ooh, the five. Like sex? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Like that. laughs> um, what what books did you guys read that's children? 
I didn't read as a kid. I at all? I was the same as you. Of just like I read the books I needed to do for school. And then, yeah. then I just stopped reading yeah. after I didn't have to anymore. Well, that actually for me, that was starting in like middle school. Because in elementary school, I think I loved reading. Mm. But then, but I would read um, like, you know, Junie B. Jones? Does oh, anyone yeah. know Junie B. Jones? Yeah. A to Z Mysteries? Sure. Magic Treehouse? Yeah. No? Those, I, I, I know what you're talking about. Do you? Yes, I do. You read a lot of books, huh? Uh, I I would try and read. So I wanted to be smart as a kid, but I just hated reading. Mm. And I felt like I wasn't getting anything emotionally from these books. Uh, and I wasn't learning anything in particular from these books. So I was like, fuck this, I'm not reading. And then I uh, clamored my way into getting homeschooled. And so I never had to read. And I think really the only book that I remember reading as a kid that I liked was Brave New World. Because I was like, duh, 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 what, this is what's happening now. This happens now, it's <laughs> oh, wow. happening now. And and then that just stuck with me. And then I think as I got older and I realized that there were there was information, there was something that I was looking for in terms of a perspective on life. That's mm -hmm. when I started to to get into, you know, that Greek shit, and yeah. that French shit. So you don't like fiction? Do you like fiction? No, I don't like fiction. I I, I have to say, and I and I hate it because it's pretentious, but I really do like philosophy. I spend a lot of time, spend a lot of time I reading might that need shit. Some uh, book recommendations from you. Because okay. I've only done fiction. Yeah. I would love to explore some nonfiction options. Sure, sure. Especially philosophy. That was my favorite subject in school. Really? Mm -hmm. Don't remember Ooh. shit about it, but... I never. I wish I took a philosophy class. I wish I took a psychology class and a philosophy class. Actually, psychology class, I think, would have scared the shit out of me. Could have. Because yeah. I'd just be yeah, like thinking like, what am I thinking? Why am I thinking when I'm thinking? Oh, well, shit, my brain is like this. Speaking of some things that might... My brain does this because of this? Scare the shit out of us. Ooh. I would love to kick off a, a little question. Yeah, that yeah, actually yeah. our audience selected for us. Okay. So as you guys listening might know, we have a patronage model at Rooster Teeth called FIRST. And with FIRST membership, it supports everything we do here at Rooster Teeth. It supports Best Friends Today. It supports yeah. Always Open and All Good No Worries and everything we make. And it really does a lot for us. So if you are considering signing up, please do. Or at least come check out roosterteeth.com where you can find all of our content. But we also have a Discord where we put out this poll of different icebreaker questions that we could ask on the show. Oh. And this is one that our audience selected for us today. So this one is, if you could be reincarnated into any animal after you die, what would you choose and why? Yes. Uh, I love <laughs> this question. I've, I've, um, I would probably pick... Um, can I have two? Yeah, go for okay. it. There's one no of them. Yes. Um, one of them is an anteater because <sighs> Will, I hope that, I hope the second animal is an ant. Are you fucking <laughs> answer is that an anteater? What do you know about being an anteater? Um, if okay, I think I've said this before maybe, but if my favorite food was just running around on the floor and you were and I was just And that there's like so much of a, in uh, the th world. Just, if there were a bunch of cheeseburgers just running around on the floor <laughs> and I loved fucking cheeseburgers, I'd be in heaven. I'd just be like, "Oh my god, a cheeseburger." <laughs> yeah, give wow. me that. Oh my god. Yeah. So, that's my <laughs> answer number 1, but I do think I'd get bored. Uh -huh. But I, I maybe I'm programmed to I'm literally called an anteater. Live? I'm yeah, programmed they, they to just love ants yeah. and eat ants. That's my life. That's true. Do they have high sex drive? I get drives? fulfillment to just eat like, ants. Would you have fun? Like, would it be, would ant eater sex be fun? I'm just loving ants and fucking other ant eaters. And fucking other ant eaters. And they live about 14 years. <laughs> All right. Which okay. is like Great. pretty good on I'd the get, animal scale, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so that's one. Number two, okay. I think. Don't say ant. <laughs> no, no. That would be boring. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> interesting. Be no. Interesting. I think I think some type of bird would okay. be cool. Just to, just to fly. What's the smartest bird? Crow. Yeah, I'd be Crows a crow. Are very smart. Just fly around. Mm -hmm. That'd be badass. But if you were a crow, and we don't really understand the intelligence of crows, although we know they are very intelligent, what if you were fully sentient and you didn't have abilities to communicate with humans, but you understood the the travesty that you were witnessing and you wanted to say something about it, but you couldn't? Do you <laughs> How think that's would what I? they're experiencing? Now? <laughs> they're, yeah, but they, they're not making an effort to change anything because they know that they can't. Yeah, and and that's why they're just in pain. Why would they be in pain? They're just <sighs> observers. They'd be like. Yeah, that's your, that's your problem. Emotional I pain. can fucking fly. Are you kidding? I think they know. I think they know. <laughs> they might know, but they'd be like, you know what? I can fly. So that's literally my schizo babble. It's just like, sorry. I know that's a that's a harsh term, but it's very true. Where I'll be like, crows can they read my thoughts? I know they know. So, uh, but that's not real. Do you ever have a bird like by your window or anything like that? And you're like, oh god, yeah, because I just don't want it looking at me. It knows. It knows. What does it know that I don't know? 
I think probably a lot will. <laughs> Can you fly? I don't think so. I can't fly. Mm. Damn, got me. That's actually a good answer. I didn't think about that because I think flying would be really flying fun. Would be fine, but yeah. you are pretty like low on the you're you are on the prey scale. Yeah, but you could just fly away. But you can. You just, just have to away. be smart. I think that really I'd want to be a cat. Mm. I feel like you have a lot of agency as a cat, but then you also have the option to you know be dependent on people. You get to sleep yeah. all night. They're beautiful. Would you be an indoor cat or an outdoor cat? I think I'd or be an outdoor cat. A stray cat. cat. I'd be an outdoor cat. Oh, I would. Or like a hybrid. Indoor for me. I'd mm. want to be a hybrid indoor. I have friends who let their cats in and out. So it's like you they can go like out and hunt. Area. and Yeah, they can. Well, just even on the street too. Like they can go out and, and hunt and be free during the day. And then at night they come into the bedroom. That's and, what and I want cuddle. now. And they bring little gifts. That's what yeah. I want now. I want they to be bring little, little gifts. Yeah. I want to go out and hunt and be free and like fuck with me. And like, the great thing about cats too is you don't have to pretend to like someone. Like oh, ca- yeah. if cats have an attitude. It's like, yeah, my cat's just a bit of a bitch. So yeah, it's just yeah. Like, that's what, what is. it is. Yeah, I-, I find myself to have a lot of cat-like features. It's almost as if I model behavior after cats. What is that? Like, I'll, I'll do something and I'm like, damn, I'm just, that, that's just like a feline ass thing to do. <laughs> Fuck you. You have an example, or are you? Okay. Even like physical just... stuff where it's sort of like the way that a cat will uh, show affection physically. Sometimes I'll do that as a human being, and I'm like, what am I? What am I doing? I'm not an animal. What am I doing? You're preparing. Yeah. For your afterlife. Right. As a cat. That's so right. God, take me now. <laughs> Just kidding. What about you, Barbara? Yeah. Barbara. I mean, cat's a good one. That's one I considered. Sure. Um, I feel like if I were to pick something in the afterlife, I've thought about a lot of factors. Like, you don't want it to be too low on, um, what's it called? Eat food chain. The food chain. Yeah. You don't want it to be too low on the food chain, but also you want to have a longer life expectancy, all that stuff. Like, there's some animals that live for like, a few days. Like I think yeah. flies expectancies is like week or something yeah. like But they that. just party on shit all the time. That seems like a fun life. Anyways, That's very true. As you were saying. And you start out as a maggot. Yeah. Right? But then I started to think of like tortoises. Like tortoises could live a very long time. But that would also be a very boring That would life. be so boring. Very slow. So I was thinking bird. Yeah. But cats up there. But then I was like, what if you're just like a really cute puppy who like everyone wants to love on all the time? You have your pamper to hell, you know, like mm. it's just the most luxurious um, life. But then again, you can't be a puppy forever. Yeah, I know. Because then you're just a dog. Because then you you become a dog. Yeah. Woof. <laughs> Woof. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Woof. I, I think, don't know. I think it's, it's because dogs are so, um, they are man's best friend. They, they are is the, uh, submission that i don't like about it as mm-hmm. a cat i still true. want my agency because a cat owner you're a cat owner you know that they love you on their time and again yeah, you could be standoffish and it's totally accepted yeah yeah maybe a dolphin they're smart dolphins right? apparently smart. are very devious creatures mm. evil <laughs> sign me up in a way they seem fun though they seem like they have fun do you guys know about they the history around. of nasa and dolphins no please no. please uh enlighten us <sighs> does anybody know about this all right. And some head shakes. No. Let's just say that NASA, which is like our space program, oh. nationally funded, uh, did some research on dolphins to see if we could teach them English. And they ended up having a woman have sex with a dolphin. <gasps> yes, I do know this. Yeah. It actually, that we talked about that on the RT podcast many years ago and oh, it yeah. became an RTAA. Interesting. And there's, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently they did L- L- LSD they together. They sure did. They did LSD together. LSD? No. The LSD. dolphin and the the woman, mm-hmm. they did LSD together? Because they were hoping that for, they were like, well, the brain is similar to ours. Maybe they'll like see some shit and they'll be able to speak English. Oh, the 70s. What was going on? <laughs> what was going that on? Too much and not enough at the same time. Very, crazy. very, very true. So maybe not a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> well, not a dolphin in the 70s. In this hypothetical, is there is this like our only life? Like this is it? Like we we live as a human and then we die once and then we're reincarnated as that animal and then we die forever. I like to think it keeps going. It keeps on going. Yeah, and we keep That's like responding as different animals for yeah. our of our choice. Yeah. So okay, cool. What about an object? Ooh, 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 if you get be reincarnated as an object, as an object, <laughs> like the Mona Lisa. Oh. That's so sad and boring. You have people gawking at you all the time. But the <gasps> people watching would just be oh. phenomenal. That's very true. Although, if you've ever been to France, it's just not that museum is like smelly, stuffy as fuck. You yeah. can't do it. You can't joke around. You ever go to the Met, the Metropolitan Museum of New York? Whoa, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York is a party. They don't give a shit what you do. You can take your shoes off. 
it's a party. Really? But the Louvre? Mm-mm. No. <laughs> no. So, not so much. Not, not great people watching. Hmm. I have a theory about what happens after we die. Um, yes. I haven't thought about it enough, though. I also have a theory. What, what are the theories? <laughs> Let's get into it. You I, go I'm, first. Th- this fascinates me more than most topics, so I would love oh. to hear. Sure. I think that uh, our conscious recedes into a collective unconscious and we still exist within other people. But no one who is conscious and living now would would know that. So if you ever heard of the theories about past lives and shit, I don't know know if it's that explicit, but there is something about your soul has to be some form of matter, I'd Mm -hmm. like to think. We've heard these stories of uh, very young kids, usually toddlers or even younger, Mm -hmm. recounting things that have happened to them. Mm -hmm. Like there was, I think, one story in particular of this three-year-old, two or three-year-old talking about um, the attacks on 9-11. And he being one of the people who was in the building, he like described the floor and like how it felt and like all these like particular (sighs) details that a three-year-old should not have any knowledge of. Mm. Um, and claimed he was like some person who existed back then, who was in fact a person who existed. Uh, that kind huh. of shit is wild to me. Yeah, I heard that. I had a, I spoke to a clinician once uh, who would treat schizophrenia, children with schizophrenia, which is a very unusual thing to occur, uh, having symptoms so early. But uh, what this clinician said to me was like, I, they said things to me that I just can't, understand and and of course you can't disclose the information but sure the the point was is like at this point i have no idea what's going on i heard things that i can't unhear and it just suggests that there's there's something oh my god there's something going on and I, that really freaked the fuck out of me but yeah. <laughs> but but this is to say that i imagine your soul must go somewhere, somewhere. would you rather know or not know like what well happens? you know me and what i do so if there was a box right here on this table and inside of it was the answer to the afterlife and where we go and what happens would you open it yeah you'd open it i so for me i don't want to know how or when i die yeah but knowing what happens after you die i would be curious to know because in my mind the most re- real answer is nothing I yeah agree. you just stop existing would that be would that provide some like closure or would it like like yeah. If it, if it did say nothing. Well, I think it's because I've come to terms with that idea. Yeah. And honestly, there is some comfort in that of just like, well, when you die, you're, you're gone. Gone. You're done. Like you, you just, die. You aren't aware anymore. So yeah. you can't. It's not a bad fact. thing because not, you can't feel bad because you, you don't exist. It is. And something you're not aware of not existing anymore. Yeah. So there is like some comfort in that. And I know this is a, a pretty intense topic for some people. So I apologize <laughs> if uh, you were not warned beforehand. But. Yeah, what's uh, what's your theory? Do you have a different theory? Oh. <sighs> well, I don't want to sound stupid. No, go ahead. No and such thing. Also, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> so, since um, time is infinite, yes, right? Mm, okay. Maybe it's is a it concept? Not? I don't know. I wouldn't know. Um, assuming that time is infinite and it keeps sure. going and, and going and going, I think that eventually um, everything. It's gonna happen again. That the is way that it to is. say that everything has already happened, no? Yeah. So synchronicity could theoretically. Be, you yeah. know, what? we're not we're not getting. I into think this. so. I think eventually, <laughs> if I if I don't exist forever, then eventually forever is gonna it's, it's something. Everything's gonna happen again, and I'm just gonna live the same life. That's that's literally. I don't know. I believe that, and also, or maybe as an anteater, or maybe as, or an, as an anteater. anteater. Um, I just my I'm just like. Time has existed for so, so long <laughs> and it's going to exist for so, so, so long after I die. Space. Time. There's, there has been so much time that has elapsed yes. since the begin, beginning of the universe and who this knows unit, before that. Right, but you're, ta- you're talking about space has existed yeah. for so much time. Yes. Mm-hmm. But time as a construct, what is, what is that? I don't know. Okay. But no one knows. Well, that's but like, I'm saying, okay, yeah. there's a timeline. Yeah. It's like th- this long. Mm-hmm. And I am like here, 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 here. You probably here, can't here, even here, see. Here, here. If you you're can't even going like keep this, zooming, you can't keep even zooming, keep zooming, keep zooming. I'm like here. <laughs> um, and okay. my, I'm, I'm just like the odds that I just happen to be within that existence of time right now mm-hmm. is so, so low that I'm like, there's no way this is like, I just happen to be alive and existing right now. 
it, and this is it. Like this is the only time I will ever exist throughout this entire timeline and it is now. It is yeah. happening right now. Well, that's great. What the fuck are you? I don't want to know about the afterlife because I want to know what happens after I die. I want to know what what am I? What is this? What is this? Some flesh and carbon. I mean, it could be a simulation. Yeah, I've heard some uh, pure mathematicians talk to me about this where they're like, you know, it's the likelihood that you just exist as an entity that just started existing now instantaneously at any given moment. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You're just doing this because you don't want to have to Isn't deal with the I fact said? that you 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 have erectile dysfunction. So, Damn. And it's so true. So I just want to know what I am. I don't care about why or what this is, what the external world sure. is, because go. F I could be crazy. It could be a simulation, but that's why I want to know. It could be. What am I? Hmm. What am I? What am I? Are you a bunch of ones and zeros? No, I don't believe that. Don't John lock this motherfucking conversation. I don't believe that. So you're non-binary? Yeah. <clears throat> I love it. Nice to meet you. Well, these are, I, I feel like we should get you guys on another show to talk about this in depth because I feel like we could keep going on. But sure. let's get to some audience questions that we have. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, no, please. Talking. I love this. We're just talking and talking. talking. And Never talking. apologize. Um, so if you guys have questions for our show, which we will about to get into right now, um, you could email those to alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com. We'd always love to hear from you. Oh, exactly. Point right there. There you go. What? There you go. What? You. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Oops. Sorry, I was just getting the camera. Okay. I was just getting this camera. All right. Sorry. Things get mythical this week on Please Be Nice to Me. Stevie, Jordan, and Emily will be competing for the title of most nicest. Here's a sneak peek. Hard. May I do a train? Hard, hard, hard. hard. We haven't had one of these in a minute. That's nice. Wow. Oh, do you want on the front? Yeah, okay. Yay! <laughs> I thought you were asking me to do you in the front, and I was like, <laughs> do me in the front. <laughs> do we, me in the front. Right. We got to move the train back a little oh. bit. Reminder, Charlotte, let's call the episode Do Me in the Front. <laughs> so here is our first question. Yes. Hi, I'm a 25-year-old woman in serious need of some relationship advice. I've been seeing this guy since the beginning of December 2020. I was incredibly shy and anxious back in high school, so this is my first relationship, and to me, everything was going awesome. I thought we had a great relationship and I was happy, but in the past year, my younger sister started dating her first boyfriend as well, and seeing the differences between our relationship has opened my eyes. My sister and her boyfriend hang out all the time. They go on dates and she spends time with his family often. My boyfriend and I never see each other. I'm talking maybe every few months or even longer. Our relationship mainly exists through text or discord and we're nowhere near long distance. He lives barely 20 minutes away. I don't drive and he's very busy, so I understand that we can't see each other all the time, but even once a month would make me happy. However, the majority of the time I tried to make plans to spend time together, he either cancels on me at the last minute or goes radio silent and then never brings it up afterwards. It's gotten to the point where I don't bother getting ready the day of and considered stopping asking to hang out in the first place. The other issue is that I genuinely have no idea how he truly feels about me or if he even sees me as a serious girlfriend. I'm not a materialistic person, but I've never gotten anything from him for any holiday or birthday, not even a simple card. I don't think he's ever even directly told me that he loves me. Sometimes it just feels like he treats me as nothing more than a friend and the thought saddens me greatly. I've never said anything to him about this because having never dated before, I wasn't really sure what was normal in a relationship and I'm terrible with confrontation. I don't know how to bring this up to him. I don't want to hurt his feelings, but at this point, I'm not sure how much longer I could do this. I feel like my heart is ready to break if I think about it for too long. What should I do? Is there any hope in here, or have I just been blinded by my own ignorance for far too long? Wow. That's a harsh one. Yeah. It sounds to me like it's not your boyfriend. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the first thought. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say the interesting line is is that I don't want to hurt his feelings. It sounds like your feelings are hurt. Yeah, yeah. it sounds so he, like he has no problems hurting your feelings. Yeah, and, and not considering that at all. So it makes sense for you to be able to emote to him without fear that it's going to hurt him because you've been hurt. And Absolutely. You just want him to, to understand where you're at. But yeah. no, that, that's not that's not a relationship. Although if there's utility in having this friend, there's comfort in that, maintain it. But like that that that's not... That's not mm. a support system. Right. Yeah. That's, I mean, everyone does have like a different idea of of love and what love is and what constitutes like being a, a like partner. But there is definitely a line where it's like, okay, well, there's got to be like a bare minimum of just showing like, and, and also like knowing if, um, if, if the other person loves you. 
Yeah. This it, has also been going on since December 2020. I want to point that out. So it's if it this relationship is still going on by the time we're reading this question, that's almost three years of this. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which at first I was like, okay, maybe if it's been like a few months or even like a year and there's still some like wishy-washy there, but mm. three years of it is... This is this is what I'll say. Here's what I'm going to say. Please. This is your first relationship and you don't know what a relationship is supposed to be. Ask honest questions to the other person that you're in a relationship with. And if they don't know the answer, talk about how you feel about it. I mean, it, it, it seems like to say that you're ignorant or f to fear that you kept this relationship because you're ignorant, that, that's, that's, a, that's a harsh thing to say to yourself. It's just, you didn't feel comfortable asking questions. So maybe it, to begin with, wasn't the best relationship. But I think if you don't know, ask a goddamn question. Yeah. What is love? I, yeah, I think it, it, it goes back just, it usually boils down to just communication. Just like if you don't know how this person feels like truly like if if there is like a, a conversation that can be had that could that is constructive you to know? me it sounds like this and maybe it's because i've had many long-term relationships some have been great some not so great this sounds to me like he is just holding on to you for his own sake of when he is convenient for him to have a girlfriend or to have that person or if he yeah. needs a friend or whatever like of that sort um but for you, as we kind of mentioned at the top, it seems like he's not considering your feelings at all. And any relationship for it to work, it has to be very equal and both people caring about each other and each other's well-beings and making sure you're communicating and making sure you're there for one another and giving each other what that person needs. And if you are not getting any of your needs met in this relationship, you're not even seeing him more than you know a couple times every few months. It sounds like to me, it's probably in your best interest to move on from it. Hmm. I don't know if if maybe there's a path to communicating how you feel and maybe there's a stronger relationship you could build or a more, um, I guess, official relationship if he hasn't even called you his girlfriend yet, but it's been going on for three years. Uh, maybe he doesn't see you as his girlfriend hmm. and maybe that's something you need to figure out. Uh, but I don't think you should hold yourself back from exploring other options because of this, because it, it does seem like they're just taking advantage of you and the mm. kindness that you are giving. Yeah. This. But also. Yes. Um, and if you guys disagree, please. Well, I think um, I obviously like this is just like a, a, a paragraph out of like a three year or 100%. however long. So it's like we don't I don't really know exactly like this, this specific examples or situation of, of what happened. But um, me personally, if I. Like I uh, have never been in a healthy relationship. And um, the only relationship that I had was the most toxic thing to ever exist. And I'm glad that I had people around me that, you know, knock some sense into me mm -hmm. um, and tell me. And, and I also like my parents were never together. Like I never saw what a relationship was and I don't. Yeah. And even friendships were like scarce because I was moving around a lot. So I had no idea. I thought that that toxic relationship was like completely normal and I had no idea. And um, if I was this, um, I don't know the context of like this, the dude, um, like is this, this is her first relationship so obviously like it, it might have taken a while for her to realize that this isn't normal but does he think that it's normal does he know that yeah, any of this is like effect maybe in his eyes this is like oh this is what a relationship yeah is i was you about know? to say this having dated several neurodivergent individuals sometimes it's, it's very hard to just say say what you feel because if you ask them to say what they feel they're like what are you woman Shut up. What? <laughs> well, no, but not not to that like harsh degree, but but it is very difficult for some people to intuitively feel understand a relationship, yeah. a bond. It's very difficult. So sometimes people will kind of see you just as an object or as a utility. Like I use you for comfort. Mm. That's the extent of it. There's nothing beyond that. Yeah, and sure. and sometimes but, that's that's their limitation, yeah. that's their boundary. But also this like you could be like the who um you could be the most important person in his life and like not and not know it just because uh, they don't express uh, it uh, 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 uh. What? i don't want to let's not say that what he she, she could be the most important person in his life he just might not express it yeah is that a bad point 
I just, I fear that some people are delusional. Yeah. Not you, no. but in general, when people are like, but what if like, okay, I know that she's crazy, but like, what if, if maybe give it like five years, it'll be good. No, And then yeah. I'm like, huh. Well, no, I'm not saying just let it, let it happen and just be like, ignore it. But I, I mean, don't use that thought as like a crutch. Like maybe he does really love me because that might build someone up to be broken down. I get what you're saying. I think okay. it's a matter of like, you know, she says these things like, I'm not a materialistic person, but it would be nice to get at least a card on my birthday. Yeah. yeah. Like those are things that Definitely. I I try to keep in mind with relationships, like people aren't mind readers. Yeah. And like, I, you know, assuming someone will do something for you at a certain time is not mm. always the case. I think there is a balance though of like, you know, if, if you're in a relationship that goes both ways of doing things for one another and yeah. showing affection uh, in ways that you need, to affection to be shown to you and vice versa. Mm. Um, it sucks to have to ask. Yeah, you don't want to ask, but you also want to communicate like, hey, it would That's be nice a, yeah. if, you know, you would do something for my birthday, you know, it wouldn't help make me feel special and loved or whatever you want that Definitely. feeling to be. If they my, appreciate you, they'd, they'd understand. Yeah, that, that's my, my point is just that it's it's situational and I don't I don't know based on what has been said and you know. It is, I mean, all these are kind of out of context. For sure, too. and having just just communicating to, to the best and if they're, they, they'll understand if they love you and if they if they don't understand then then it's like, okay. I also wanna point out at the end of the question, she said, is there any hope here or have I been blinded my, by my own ignorance for too long? I don't want you to blame yourself in this situation. You, I think, are giving this person the benefit of the doubt and, and hoping to make this work. But I think because it is your first relationship, you are feeling like, oh, what am I doing wrong? This Is this the way it should be? I'm comparing myself to other relationships and I'm not getting this or that out of it. And mm. ultimately it comes down to, are you happy in the situation that you're in? Mm. Can it be can it be discussed? Are you comfortable discussing it with this person? Because that's another thing. If you're not comfortable talking with your partner about these things, yeah. that's kind of a red flag. Um, yeah. And so there's always gonna be more relationships. There's always gonna be more people out there who will fulfill your needs. Yeah. Will. Yeah, I just kind of realized like, I don't even know why I'm giving advice. Like I'm the worst person. Like I have never but been you, in a healthy you've, relationship. You've Perspective felt. Is always, <laughs> I mean, like, you know what a bad relationship <laughs> looks like. You know when your needs aren't met. You know when yeah. some people will take advantage of you, right? And yes. exploit you to fulfill for fulfill their needs and not return. So you, you can kind of tell just from the, uh, what she's alluding to that, yeah. or they're alluding to that, that there there might be a problem. It's also the nature of the show that we love is having different people on who have different experiences, different perspectives, yeah. different yeah. you know things that they've been through. Um, yeah. We don't expect everyone on the show to have been in a thousand different long term or short term relationships. You know, this is true. So I've had just the most unique experience. That's all I'll say. <laughs> they've not been bad. They've just been you? clinically bad. You? Not yeah. that, but clinically. Yeah. You know, a clinician would look at that and be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but me personally, I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. No problem. That's fine. A plus plus. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, thank you for your question. And uh, oh, I feel like I just no. Yeah. That, yeah, I think you give great advice. Oh, okay. That's thank great. You. No, I think that you ruined this person's thank life. Thank you. Well. That, that, that's what I'm scared of because this is like no. a real situation no. that it's like, this is, this well, is again, someone's relationship. We always say on the show, like, this is our opinions yeah. and our take on the very little context we have with these questions. And, mm -hmm. you know, we try to help. We try to give some perspective, but obviously do whatever is right for your own particular situation. Only you know what's right to do for yourself. Yeah, it's just perspective, oh. just discourse. Yeah, yeah dude. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> well, thank you for your question. And again, if you have a question for us on the show, you could email that to alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com. That is going to be our show for today. Wow. We're wow, all done. that was time. Will and Caroline, thank you so much for joining us. Thank oh, you for having us. Can yeah. we, uh, we plug some stuff you guys are up to? Some things you're doing? Um, Places yes. people could you your stuff? Yeah. We, um, huh. uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Our YouTube channel is Best Friends Today. Um, we have two shows. One is called Best Friends TV, with it, which is our talk show, mm -hmm. and Best Friends Simulator, where we have fun and be silly and be friends. And we also have a podcast called Hypothetical, Hypothetical Nonsense, Nonsense. Love it. Where we talk about things that aren't real and are fake. But you are Wahoni. I'm Wahoni. I'm yeah. Caroline Costner. I'm on YouTube. You're on TikTok. I'm on TikTok and YouTube. And YouTube. Excellent. So be okay. sure to check them out. They're hilarious. They're wonderful. And this is Barbara. 
And I'm Barbara. Babs. As I have been for all these years you've been watching me. Thank you very much for And thank you guys so much. We'll have to have you back on to talk about some more stuff. Yes. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you guys for watching this. Make sure you're subscribed to the Algonoris channel if you're not already. Check us out on roosterteeth.com and become a first member to support everything we're doing here. We really appreciate it. It does help us out directly and very much. So hopefully we'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye. Jesus, Will. God damn. Goodbye. <laughs>